What's up guys, this is The Honest Outlaw here, and today we are going to be talking about one of the coolest guns on the market, the Desert Tech MDR. Before I do that, I want to mention my Patreon supporters, thank you guys very much. Because of you, the channel keeps moving, I really appreciate you supporting it. If you like some of the stuff I use, like gloves and sunglasses, uh, you can find those in my Amazon store, and if you want to see some of the cool lights that I use on the channel, go to the Olight store and you get 10% off. I also want to mention a local homeless shelter I support. It's the first link in the description. Go down there and click that link and you can donate to those kids in Ames. Now back to the review. This is the Desert Tech MDR kind of a Gen 2 version. So the Gen 1 versions, if you don't know, had a bit of some issues, and uh, Desert Tech took those into account, took a lot of uh, user data, and essentially fixed those problems, which is really, really cool. Before we talk about that, we'll talk about what the gun is. If you're not familiar with the Desert Tech, this is a bullpup rifle. And if you're not familiar with bullpups, We'll go to bullpup class real quick. So the bullpup basically means that the action is in the rear. So as you can see here, the magazine and all of the goodies are located in the rear, including the ejection port uh, right by your face. And the reason why that is, is to uh, reduce the overall length of the rifle. So you can have a 16 inch barrel. There's a full 16 inch barrel right here for only a 26 inch overall platform, making it actually a little bit shorter than my Mark 18 for having a six inches longer barrel. And if you're gonna run something like a 5.56, for example, which is very velocity dependent, that's where the bullpup really shines. So you can have still that velocity, still that range, and reach out and touch something if you want to, but in CQB distances, uh, you're not gonna have your barrel getting caught up on doors and seat belts and all kinds of stuff when you're moving in and out of structures and through vehicles. So the bullpup idea has been around a long time. However, it's always had some shortcomings and a lot of those shortcomings I feel like Desert Tech has fixed, which is why I'm pretty excited about this. I've had a few bullpups on the channel already. The AUG, Tavor, and I've owned a couple others previously. And I can say that Again, a lot of those had some deficiencies that I think Desert Tech is fixed. On top of that, Desert Tech is a US company, unlike most of the bullpup manufacturers, which is pretty cool as well. On top of just being a bullpup, it brings some unique features to the bullpup market. For example, this rifle can change from 5.56 to 308. Now, a lot of AR-15s, stuff like that, can change to higher calibers for sure. I haven't seen very many rifles on the market uh, besides this one that I've ever even heard of the fact that you can do a caliber conversion from 5.56 to 308. This one, you can. This one's currently sitting in the 5.56 variant and uh, it has a magazine sleeve in here to insert P mags instead of the uh, 308 P mags and you change the barrel and action and stuff like that. And if you want a good video to, to see how to do that, uh, InRange has got a great video. I thought about making one, but he made one so good that I actually used it to uh, change mine over. So just go over there and check that video out. But it's really easy and only takes about 15 minutes, 10 minutes, something like that. Probably five minutes if you actually got good at it because I only did it once. And uh, so you can change your rifle over from five 56 to 308, which is a benefit, especially if you want to shoot multiple calibers and you have multiple purposes for the rifle. You can use 556 for your uh, tactical training or plinking or whatever you want to do, uh, home defense, uh, whatever, and then you can switch to 308 for a longer distance rifle and fit it in more to a DMR role. And on top of that, this would be an excellent hunting gun for things like feral hogs. And the second I saw the Desert Tech MDR, I thought of feral hog hunting. I really did. Uh, in tight quarters, brush, uh, stuff you don't want to get your barrel hooked up on. And in turn, you still have 20 to 30 rounds of 308 on tap. Some automatic fire in case you see a large group of hogs, for example. And you also have an appropriate caliber for hogs. I know 556 works, but 308 works better, let's be honest. So it's can really flex on a lot of different platforms, especially with that large caliber for a battle rifle, a battle rifle caliber inside a SBR sized platform. Now, another cool thing that it does over some other bullpups is that it has a unique ejection port design. And this is kind of what got them in trouble a little bit. They had to redesign this a little bit and make it a little bit better because it's designed to be uh, universal for left and right hand shooters. These can easily be switched out. You just press this button, pull up on the ejection port and it comes right off, it's pretty easy. Uh, I've got some videos of me doing it, I'll just roll in here really quick. And you can switch it to either side and it can eject to either side, which is pretty awesome. 
awesome as well. But the coolest thing about it is, is it ejects through the, t the front here and kind of spits out so it doesn't hit you in the face. One of the problems with a bullpup is obviously the actions in the rear faces right here. You wouldn't want an ejection port ejecting hot brass right in your face all day. So they had to think up a, a unique way to deal with that, like some of the other bullpups on the market. And I think this is a really cool one. Now, it originally had some issues, but I can tell you since I've gotten it from Desert Tech, I've had zero problems with this. And I, again, I saw InRange did some videos and I saw Grantham did some videos. And uh, initially they had some issues, but then again, when they did the uh, Gen 2 fixes, uh, it fixed all those problems. And uh, if you have any reliability problems at all, uh, Desert Tech will just fix them for free, I'm pretty sure. I think they will, yeah. And uh, all you have to do is send your MDR into Desert Tech and they will upgrade your gun. They have extremely good customer service and I've been really, really impressed uh, so far with the reception I've seen online about Desert Tech's customer service. So that's pretty cool. And on top of that, it's got the Ambi charging handle. And one of the coolest features that I really like, it has a slimline handguard. Not to mention, uh, I have the longer handguard as well, which was supplied to me by Desert Tech. And I will be doing a video on the handguard by itself. And uh, you can basically take this handguard off with two turns of a wrench. You do it in the uh, takedown anyway, it's really easy. Two turns of a wrench and a captured pin. This thing slides right off and you can put a longer rail on if you want. And we'll be running this in a video as well. I actually like the slimmer uh, version personally because this is like the first damn uh, bullpup rail that I've ever seen that I didn't have to use a vertical grip for. Uh, they're still nice to use a vertical grip if you want to, but you absolutely don't have to. You can run this in the same Chris Costa uh, C-clamp fashion as you do your AR and it feels really good and ergonomic, not to mention it comes with M-Lock, which is pretty sweet. It also has uh, American style magazine releases, which work really well, and the Israeli style if you wanna go that route. It has removable pistol grips, unlike a lot of bullpups in the market. I think all the bullpups in the market, besides the MDR, you can actually change this out if it is a little bit too small. A lot, like again, something like an AUG, for example, you're not gonna be able to do that. And I think the biggest selling point for me personally, as far as the uh, Desert Tech goes in the bullpup market is gonna be this guy right here. So bullpups have a long trigger linkage. I'm not an exactly an expert on this, but I can tell you that every bullpup I've ever fired had an awful trigger by AR-15 uh, standards. And this trigger is not awful. And I was hoping for that because Desert Tech is well known for making a precision rifles. So that's where they got in the game in the first place. Uh, stealth and all kinds of other stuff that they make. They're well known for making bullpup precision rifles with excellent triggers. And the MDR is really no exception. This is the first uh, trigger in a bullpup that I have not immediately wanted to change or upgrade to something else. It is really, really good, somewhere around 5.5 pounds, and uh, it works really well and it's very accurate which again helps if you're gonna be using that 308 kit and you're gonna be reaching out and touching stuff. Also has a little sight block here, so if you're removing the rail and you want to keep your zero, you can put like a mini red dot mount. I've seen them use RMRs, like a SHOT Show and stuff like that, and you can keep your zero. For me, that's not a big deal. I'm just running the Aimpoint uh, T2, and if I gotta rechange my zero, I gotta rechange my zero, whatever. Now let's get into the review portion where we talk about the reliability. So the reliability on my Desert Tech MDR was excellent. I had no issues whatsoever. I uh, shot a, I think 600 rounds or so full of 308 through this guy. And then I proceeded to use it, the rest of it for 5.56. I wanna say maybe it was 500 and 500. Either way, I've got about a thousand rounds through it with no problems. I would have to say that I do prefer the 5.56 version. One of the cons of the Desert Tech is that it is, in fact, a bullpup 308. Uh, you get all the benefits of that, but you also get all the negatives of that, whereas you're gonna have a lot of blast right up close to your face. It wasn't so bad for me, however, when my wife was filming, it was pretty bad, because she's gotta get kinda up next to the gun a little bit when she's trying to film the close-ups, and the, uh, back, the back blast can be pretty decent on a very short 308. 
it's not going to be as bad as a 308 SBR because uh, it does have that longer barrel, but it is still relatively close to your face. So that's something you're going to have to be aware of. Also with the cost of 308 overall compared to 5.56, since I am generally just a range shooter, I like to stick to 5.56 because it's just simply cheaper and I can get more trigger pulls per dollar. <laughs> so I like to pull the trigger, what can I say? And uh, 5.56 does that cheaper for me personally, and I can shoot faster. And I'm, I feel like Ricky Bobby and I like to go real fast. So uh, 556 is just a little bit more practical for me overall. Accuracy speaking, it's pretty accurate. Is it the most accurate gun in the world? No, it's not. I would say that it's as accurate or a little bit less accurate than some of my AR-15s. Just because you're upgrading the 308 doesn't mean it still doesn't have the bullpup ergonomics. And one of the problems with the bullpup ergonomics is that you are going to have to shoot prone if you are shooting long distance for the most part, or shoot with a tripod, something like that. But if you are shooting prone, if you're used to an American gun, let's say a uh, AK or an AR-15, I know AK is not an American gun, but you get what I'm saying, a traditional style gun, uh, the bullpup can be a little bit awkward to shoot prone, particularly because the weight is all in the rear and the front is very lightweight. So it feels like it sways a lot and you don't have the ability to monopod off the magazine, which uh, I, some people say don't do, I do it because why not have another point of uh, stability if you can. And then a good magazine that will cause magazine issues. The upside to all the weight being in the rear is every other application other than shooting prone. So. A lot of times if you're clearing rooms or something like that, you're going to have your gun up for a really, really long time, which is kind of where the magwell uh, grip came into place to begin with. And the bullpup really shines in that particular application because not only is it uh, short and easily maneuverable, but since all the weight's in the rear, you can hold it up on target for a really, really long time and not get fatigued like you would if all the weight was out in the front. So for CQB type stuff, it really, really does shine. And for holding something on a target, let's say for home defense, like if you're training your rifle on the door while you're on the phone and nine, to 911 or something like that, you could hold this gun up a lot longer than you could your standard AR-15, just simply because of the ergonomics and the weight in the rear. Again, you are gonna have some issues if you're used to an AR-15 or AK, getting used to manipulating the gun in the rear. So if you're gonna have a malfunction or something like that, you're gonna have to learn a different battery of arms, number one, and number two, it's gonna be just a little bit more difficult to clear since it is an enclosed system. Luckily, there aren't very many malfunctions, but if you do have one, it's gonna be a little bit more difficult to clear with the MDR, and you are, again, gonna have to get used to the controls. The benefit of the MDR, though, is that they're not that much different from an AR to begin with. You have your safety selector right here which is very intuitive you have your magazine release right here your trigger is very ar-esque so is the grip so overall what do i think of the gun i think it is unique i think it's cool and i think for what it is it's a very excellent choice it does have some downsides especially if you're not used to the bullpup platform however it does have some extreme upsides as well especially if you're getting something that's like very i, I don't want to say this but like mission specific like if you're looking for something solely for home defense and a large caliber i mean or if you're looking for you know anything like a brush gun or a hog gun, or if you just want to be different and cool, I can tell you that an AR-15 is not going to turn heads at the shooting range. This thing will. Every time I've seen somebody come over to my house, they thought this was the gun from Starship Troopers. Like it looks ridiculous. It looks like something out of Star Wars. And for me personally, as I'm a gun guy, but I'm also kind of a collector sometimes, and I like to connect unique things, like the flux defense brace, or you know MP5s or sub guns that stuff looks really cool it looks very video game ish and so does this and not only does it have the looks has the cool factor has the unique features but it also works very very well uh, I would have no problem using this for home defense it seems very reliable very accurate to me and uh, overall I think it's a pretty excellent gun couple of the downsides though again that you're going to have you're going to have some issues with malfunction clearing and you're going to have some issues paying for it because it is an expensive rifle now it doesn't benefit from the years of r d and lowering lowering prices like the ak and ar market because it is a new design so you are going to have to pay right around two thousand to twenty five hundred dollars for one of these and that is no small price i completely understand that but in my personal opinion if you're looking for something like this it's worth it i've wanted one of these since Show of 2016 when they first came out, and now I have one, and I couldn't be happier. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Please help out your local homeless shelters, and remember to recycle. I'll check you later.
You know what I like about that gun? The ejection. So it doesn't hit you in the face. It goes away from my face, so <laughs> I don't have to deal with that.